But I'm very clear to say to my patients, to um, groups I speak to, high school students that I do a lot of work with, that whether we develop an illness, whether we, you know, develop a cancer or develop perhaps thyroid condition or or develop um, acne, migraines, a lot of these things um, are based on this intricate dance between our genetics, um, our environment, of course, you know, things that we put on in and around our bodies, we breathe, um, but also our lifestyle. And that's where my integrative medicine training really gave me some great insight into this. Things like sleep quantity and quality make a huge difference in not only cognition and memory, um, but also in pain levels, pain evaluation, but also in inflammatory response in terms of inflammation, in terms of managing chemicals and removing them in and around the brain in our lymphatic system, whether we smoke, whether we sit out in the sun, um, smoking and UV radiation from sun are one-to-one -one direct cause and effects of environmental exposures. There's very few things in this world that you can, um, you know, uh, argue that aren't confounded by other components of lifestyle, such as nutrients or sedentary lifestyle or chemicals. But we know that radiation, particularly skin cancers and lung cancers are pretty much a one-to-one -one, um, dose um, uh, connection. And um, our, our processed food intake and all the chemicals that are involved with that, with low nutrient value, whether we exercise, whether we drink wine or not drink wine, any alcohol, all of these things together are what in some way determine our health um, expression. You know, we call this the exposome. We do know, however, that lifestyle and environmental exposures are two things that we can control. Genetics are not easy um, to control. You can't just change your genetic profile. But we now know that environment, um, stress, sleep, diet, exercise, and lifestyle all contribute a great deal to whether or not those genetic sequences will express disease. And again, we call that the exposome if you want to dive into de that deeper. And so what that tees up is the question of you have more control over our future health risks than we even think about. And that is a lot of the work I do with these books um, is really, and teaching is really give people an idea at the beginning of the story that yes, what I'm about to cover is tough stuff, but the punchline is we have more control um, over the future, our future health um, potential um, than we think, and even the potential of our offspring, which we're gonna talk about. So this slide is just to give an idea, um, you know, how endocrine disruption works in the human body. Um, and to start off with, human hormones are incredibly sensitive. We've evolved, again, anthropology, we've evolved to have, uh, to, to conserve the functions of the human body for survival. And one of those conserved uh, activities is to be able to messenger around the human body, different physiologic effects, um, growth development, puberty, menopause, um, brain development, body development, um, you know, whether or not our thyroid functions in terms of a feedback loop, our pineal gland. So hormones are essentially um, very key uh, uh, messengers. And not only do they have to be created to get to that site, they also have to have receptors like a baseball mitt and a baseball to catch that message. It turns out that many of these environmental chemicals specifically entitled or called endocrine disrupting chemicals have now known information um, on how they can disrupt the process of that messaging system, whether it's reducing the amount of hormone that's released from a, uh, a, a hormone, um, an endocrine organ, whether or not it's the number, the reduction in receptors uh, of where that messenger will be received. Um, we know with um, certain chemicals like bisphenol A and phthalates that we can have multiple effects. You can have reduction of androgen um, hormones, which are male hormones. And you can have the mimicking, even at very, very low levels, parts per million, parts per trillion, uh, mimicking estrogenic chemicals. And so what's so key about all of this is that, you know, we need our, our physiology to work properly and be conserved. Um, and yet these chemicals are now being, you know, infiltrated into our systems um, at very, very low levels, but of course, over time. 
and over time plus low levels is quite important. Um, Time Magazine made, the, you know, created this cover, um, I believe it was October in 2010. And really it described how the first nine months shaped the rest of your life, but understanding how those environmental exposures in utero exposure to chemicals can have effects on the health of that child as they are born and move into adulthood. And um, you know these are these are quite important. These um, this evidence, and there's quite a bit of evidence to this that the in utero exposure is really quite quite important to normal brain development. And even in the case of phthalates as a class, which was done by Dr. Shauna Swan, we know that um, you know phthalates can decrease the anogenital distance, which is a measure of androgenic exposure or reduced exposure in um, not only lab animals, but in humans as well. And that phthalates can in fact um, change the, uh, the outcome of male genitalia when they're born. Um, and so that can be dose response related to the, number, to the amount of phthalates in the blood system of that infant. Um, and so these are really key issues that what we do not only matters to us now, if you're an adult listening, but it matters to our children and the choices they make, which is why high school education has become a key issue in my, um, my work and now moving forward. So we need to talk to all generations about these issues so that if they choose one day to have children, um, they would make better choices perhaps leading up to getting pregnant and staying pregnant and while they're pregnant and even after they've given birth so that their children get reduced exposures to many harmful chemicals. Um, let me move on. So what are endocrine disrupting chemicals? So this is just one, dis uh, one definition. Endocrine disrupting chemicals um, are chemicals that may interfere with the body's endocrine system and produce adverse developmental, reproductive, neurologic, and immune effects in both humans and wildlife. Um, and again, potential effects on fetus, infants, adolescents. And these critical windows of development are quite interesting because we now know that when we have hormones that are being created at, at um, large quantities during certain parts of development, of course, in utero, toddler, puberty, and even menopause, which we'll talk about, um, that those are the windows that are considered very vulnerable and could perhaps be um, an avenue by which um, harmful chemicals that are endocrine disrupting in nature can have their, their greatest effects clinically. We do know from an epidemiologic study that many endocrine, dis endocrine disorders, meaning that they're connected to this hormonal system that's so vulnerable, um, have changed in terms of, um, you know, increased risk for problems. We know infertility among Northern Europeans has increased dramatically. If anyone's heard the latest book, um, Countdown, by a colleague, Shauna Swan, who wrote an actual um, a wonderful chapter in our textbook of, uh, in 17, 2017, that was a really eye-opening, um, you know, book that described her research over many, many years discussing infertility and how that's being affected um, by our environment and, and specifically chemicals, among other things. 20 to 40% of, of European males um, now have decreased sperm quality in the subfertile range. We know that quantity has also decreased dramatically. Um, radiation also plays a key role in this. I'll be discussing some of this tonight um, with uh, Theora, Theodora Scorato when we talk about radiation. Uh, exposure and what to teach kids and how to handle our tech toys. Um, but I also have a very nice chapter in my new book, Non-Toxic, on um, tech toys and how to handle radiation, how to explain it, and how to understand how to use it safely. Um, Cryptochidism, that is changes in male genitalia, has increased um, at birth, um, and uh, that increases risk for testicular cancer. So for instance, testes, testes not dropping um, in young babies, uh, newborn male babies at birth, that increases risk for testicular cancer later on. Preterm birth and low birth weight, of course, is associated with endocrine disruption, um, especially in um, more polluted environments, many um, major cities, but third world countries particularly. Um, trends toward earlier onset of breast development in all countries where this has been studied, we now know that we are shifting um, puberty to a much earlier um, age where it used to be um, you know, a century or two ago, age 17, age 16, when young women would develop um, the beginnings of puberty, we now are at the time where it's eight, nine years old now. 
Um, and as a subgroup, African-American female girls um, are experiencing this, experiencing this um, in, in greater quantity. And it's perhaps related to some of the specific um, marketed and used um, chemicals in hair products for young girls and African-American women. So this is a separate area that I talk about and certainly bring up in high schools. Um, global rates of endocrine related cancers have certainly been increasing um, breast and mitral ovarian, as I mentioned, and obesity and type two diabetes has certainly skyrocketed worldwide. Um, and that is in fact, because insulin is, an, is a hormone in the body that does get disrupted. Um, classic chemicals are BPA, phthalates, um, PBDE, um, I'm sorry, uh, flame retardant, uh, brominated flame retardants, um, and many of the flame retardant chemicals that are um, fluorinated. So we are starting to see that environment and the products we use and the products we don't intentionally use um, can affect everything, even, even our, our fat cells growing larger or smaller, and whether or not we're um, becoming insulin resistant. I will add to this mix a topic that I'll be talking about in the future. I'm working on a new um, uh, book in the future in regards to uh, immune system effects from chemicals. Um, and the literature is robust. And so we'll start to see um, how some of the not just classified as endocrine disrupting chemicals, but chemicals that can affect other aspects of our body and different systems will take, take have been shown to, um, uh, you know, exist. Mm -hmm.